Welcome to the Dumb Leaders Podcast, where you learn the lessons of lousy leaders. Don't mock. I'm not a fool. Don't mock. I'm not a fool. Hey there, it's Tony Curl here and welcome to episode 107 of the Dumb Leaders Podcast. The Dumb Leaders Podcast where we have a library of lessons from lousy leaders. Today I'm just sharing a an article I wrote a, a number of years back. It's about surviving a perf- poor performance review. We re- often receive feedback and we often receive questions here and on the, on the podcast in relation to things that have happened to leaders or managers out there in the workforce. And of course, we endeavour to uh, reply to those personally and to help people in the situations that they're in. But one of the biggest things that we get uh, questions in relation to is about performance reviews or performance appraisals or pay rises linked to performance reviews. And suffering a poor performance review is one of the hardest things a leader can have happen to them. So suffering a poor performance review is not as uncommon or as rare as we would like it to be. There are many leaders out there with great intentions, great intentions, um, good work ethics, who for, for a number of reasons often have to come back from a poor performance review. Now, as humans, our natural tendency is often we look to discredit the review, we look for blame, we look for excuses, we play the personality, they just don't like me, Um, or, and often we'll look for willing participants in which we can share our pain. You know, those people that we can bring in and say, how unfair is this? So we sort of play the victim a little bit. So that's some of the tendencies that leaders or managers can have happen when they do get a poor performance review. Now, whether we like it or not, the performance review is part of our culture. It's part of the corporate culture of many organisations. It's usually held half yearly and executed to varying degrees of effectiveness. So if you listen to um, maybe the HR people, they'll talk about some of the shortfalls every now and again, but they'll also talk about the need that it has to happen, right? So you'll see varying degrees of effectiveness based around, many in many times, many cases, the leader's application to it. It's designed to provide feedback formally on performance results and career progression. So it, there's a formal process in here in relation to those key points, performance results and career progression. It's also used to determine salary increases, bonuses, right? And, you know, you, the potential for your career, whether it stays in the silo that you're in now or you move, you've got the capacity to broaden out. Now, I don't want to get into the the merits of the execution of performance reviews. Needless to say, based on the feedback that we receive, these are still challenging things for organisations. The execution, what I would call the execution, the implementation of a performance review, largely relies on the cap- cap- capacity and competence of the line manager delivering the performance review. So... I'll just leave that one there. Um, the reality is performance reviews shouldn't be a shock. They should not be a shock, and they should just be a formalisation of the feedback that you as a leader have already received. And this is the biggest challenge that the leaders and, and the feedback that we get has indicated, that you go into a performance review and then, lo and behold, you are hit with surprise after surprise. So no feedback along the journey, no discussions around things you need to improve. All of a sudden it's bang and you hit with it at the performance review. And that's just truly unfair. But as I said, it often will come back to the execution or the capability of the line manager that's running the performance review. Now, while it's confronting to have had a poor performance review, it is survivable. So sometimes we receive these unexpectedly. But don't 
don't allow the shock to distract you, right? So you need to be clear on a number of things. And this is always a really good stepping stone as you walk into a performance review. This is, should be part of your individual preparation for going into a performance review. So if poor performance is ever talked about or discussed, get specifics about what the poor performance is. Don't allow generalizations. Ask for and demand specifics. If you need to fix and work on things, you need to know what those things are. So be really clear about, can you give me a specific? Can you provide me a specific? I need to know specifically what that is so that I can work on it, so that I can be really, really clear about what it, what I need to do to fix it. Get clear performance standards. Ask questions like, what does success, uh, success look like when you're dealing with these poor performance reviews? So if someone's saying you're not hitting the mark here, ask them, okay, so what does success look like in that particular area? At least that's going to give you some provision for clarity and enable you to see what that uh, what, what the performance standards are. Make sure that you are made clear on the desired standards. Again, don't allow generalizations. How can you achieve results when the results or the standards themselves are not very clear? So be very clear in questioning and asking and getting clarity around that. Ask for support. What is available for you to you to help support you through this? At the very least, ask your line manager for advice to achieve the desired results and standards and ensure that you put this into your plan. Okay, Always ask your line manager for support and advice and always make sure that they are put in the plan. Seek ongoing feedback opportunities from your direct report. Ask questions like, how will I know when I've achieved the desired standards? So you want to be in a regular feedback process so that you can actually be gauging or getting a gauge on how you're performing as a, um, in comparison to the desired standards. And finally, commit to change and commit to the feedback process. It's really, really important that if you have had a poor um, performance review, you want to leave that review as positively as you can. And even though you may be in shock, you may be annoyed, you may be pissed off or frustrated, the reality is you want to, you want to commit to the change and you want to leave that performance review as positively as you possibly can. Now, after the review, the key here is to do what you say you are going to do not just it's lip service at a review and you hope that it goes away. You're going to commit to doing what it is that you said to do. Maintain your integrity by not discussing the review with others. No matter how hard you want to be the victim, don't. Just keep it to yourself and start the process to work. Don't allow that victim mentality. Make it happen. Maintain your role in the team. Maintain relationships with those that you lead and keep your boss updated. You know, make it happen. Post review, just make it happen. You can survive a poor performance review. I've known many leaders in their time, not only to survive, but to use that as a, a foundation to leap into new roles and promotables because it does provide you the opportunity to create a closer connection with people above you, especially when you are making the right steps. Now, I'm not a big fan of performance reviews as I believe good leaders ensure good feedback processes are part of their daily agendas within the team. I've seen too many person, uh, performance reviews glossed over, generalised, ineffective and unfortunately based on personality. You don't support my football team. We have nothing to talk about, so I don't really like you. So I've never made the effort to get to know you. So therefore, you mustn't be as good as Jimmy Boy who supports my football side. A growing trend that we oft often see now is for leaders to blame their line manager for the poor review that they place on you. Now, I've also seen the bell curve blamed. You know, so so what I mean by that is that often a line manager will say to you, 
that, um, you know, I, I don't want to rate you like this, but it's come from above, you know, that sort of shit. And fundamentally, that's what it is. It's, it's shit. I've also seen the bell curve blamed. Now, a bell curve is a normal distribution curve which would flow naturally. So out of six members of a team, for example, you would usually find one leader to be above average, um, four to fall within the average sort of a range, and one within that review to be maybe below average and needing to work on what it is they need to do. Now, some leaders, when they're in down, they're executing their performance review, will often blame the bell curve. I need to, I've got so many above average people, which is, um, which is their words for saying I've got too many friends to look after. So I've got uh, too many people in the above average, so I need to have someone in, and, and, you know, because of the bell curve, it's got to be you. You know, that, once again, that's a, a little bit of, of frog shit, if you ask me. Now, the bell curve is not my preferred method of rating people. However, it does in- ensure that leaders rate their team accordingly. The facts are that within teams, we usually find a standout or two, a bunch of average people, and there's going to be some people that are below average. But once again, this shouldn't be left to an annual performance review to understand where you sit in the bell curve. This should be part of your ongoing daily feedback sessions that you're having with your team and your leaders. So through all its faults and potential shocks, the key to surviving a poor performance review is to accept the ownership of the process and the plan to overcome and improve. Apply the action, be vigilant, do what you say you're going to do, and be visual when you achieve the desired outcomes. Hey, I'm Tony. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Dumb Leaders Podcast. I'll see you all again next time. Don't mock. I'm not a fool. And people who know me personally uh, know that I am not a fool. But I won't get into the details of those. I just want people to realize that I'm not a fool. Don't mock. I'm not a fool. Don't mock. I'm not a fool.